So we talked about trainers, jockeys, but of course horses is the most exciting thing in many ways, Pat. Um, let's start in the 70s then with Grundy. Um, what, what was he like to ride? Well, he was a very placid horse. Um, he was unbeaten at two, he was champion two-year-old, um, and then came out at three. Unfortunately, there was a, a dispute with the member of staff in Newmarket, so they went on strike and the race was held up and we weren't allowed to come out the gates. This we, is the 2000 Giddy. Yeah, we had to start a half a furlong in front of the stalls. And Bolkonski uh, beat me a, a neck. Um, and then after that, he went and won the Irish Guineas, then won the Derby, King George. He was King a, George, though. I mean, so famous. Yeah, it was a great Guinness. race. I knew at the time I was riding a, a really good horse. Um, but also, uh, Bustino, he was, he'd, he'd won the Coronation Cup in a, in a, in a really fast time. Um, it was unfortunate because it killed both horses, you know. Yeah. Neither of them won again. Yeah, not literally, but, but, but in terms of their career. Yeah, it killed them. Right. It was such a tough race. They're all in, they're under starter's orders. And they're away. And Bustino himself is one of the first to show from Grundy on the outside and then the highest racing up now to take it up from Kinglet. And it's highest from Kinglet and Bustino, the three stable companions, with star appeal on the outside of Bustino, then comes Grundy, then just in behind Grundy is Ashmore and then Dividale, and then comes Dahlia, then on my way and Card King. And Libra's rib is the back marker as they get on towards Swindley Bottom at a really blistering pace with highest in the lead. Did it feel a tough race? Does well, yeah, he set it up well, Dick Hearn. Mm. He was pretty smart. He felt that we, we weren't a true stayer. So he used Bustino and, and them, them pacemakers to go flat out. And it's Kinglet from Star Appeal now as they race towards the five furlong marker and pass it. It's Kinglet in the lead from Star Appeal in second and Bustino third and Grundy four and five. Ashmore and six is Dahlia. Seven just behind them. Libra's rip making good ground towards the outside. Then Card King behind Card King is Dividale then on my way. And they're past the half mile marker now and racing towards the home turn and it's Bustino has gone on from Grundy. And then Joe took it up, took it up a long way out. Four from home. And Bustino from Grundy in second. Star Appeal and Dahlia then Ashmore. I never felt I, would, I was going to win a race till the last three strides. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. he had me on the way. Yeah. But the only thing is that little chestnut horse with the white face, he was, he was an honest horse. He gave you 110%. And so Grundy has done it. Grundy has established the all-time record for an English trained racehorse. He's won over £312,000. And the result of the 1975 King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes is first number 10, Grundy. So ironically, in a way, it was his stamina that won the day, right? Yeah, he, he won by staying a mile and a half. He was by great-nephew, but he was out of a mare that, that won over a mile and six. Yeah. So that's where he got his stamina from. And of course, as you said, he'd won the derby. You, you, you had three derby winners. Um, we've already mentioned a little bit Golden Fleece. Yeah. He ran really well. And of course, your other winner was, was Quest for Fame. Yeah, he was a good, good racehorse. Um, he wasn't a champion, but he was a, he was a good horse. And went to America and did very well for Bobby Franco. Mm. Um, Golden Fleece, he was, a, he was quite a good, you know, pretty much a champion, but then he didn't run again after the derby, he got cancer. Yeah, Al Grand Senor got beat a short head. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's, come on, let's talk about El Grand Senor. I mean, a brilliant racehorse, won an amazing 2,000 guineas. He was a great, great little horse. Lovely to ride. Um, was unbeaten at two. Um, he only got beat once at three, and that was in the most important race of his life. <laughs> talk us through the derby. Come on, let's just set this up for the viewers who don't know. Secreto's in there, Christy Roach. Yeah. 
if this was now, the forums would be going mad, Pat. I mean, Christie's uh, been whipping along for, for a furlong or two. Yeah, You're well, absolutely I'm, on the bridle. I'm on the hot favourite. Yeah. And we come to the, well, about two and a half. Was there a stamina doubt? No, no, I never, I never worried about he's getting in the, get, getting the trip. So you're not, so you're not sitting there because you're worried about stamina. No, no. I'm just sitting there because I'm cruising. <laughs> I think, oh, oh, this is easy, you know. And is that literally as a jockey? That is what you're thinking. Mm, the, the horse I was following was the uh, the second favourite of Henry Cecil's. Steve Cawthon was riding it, and unfortunately, he died quite quickly in front of me and left me in front. And that little horse, he um, he didn't like to be in front too long, you know. Anyway, I got caught and beat a short head. I was livid. I mean, how much in bits were you? Um, well, I, I, I didn't have a, a, a good drive home that evening, <laughs> obviously. Um, I slept all right, because when I got back, I, I gave myself a, a stiff drink and, you know, hit the sack. But I, I was waiting for the next day for the newspapers. The press. And um, I got a good slating. But, you know, you got... Of course, in those days, you didn't get internet forums and, and tweeting and stuff like that. You can imagine, if that happened today, within oh. a second of you passing the post, oh. you know, cocky eddery and... Nightmare. Uh, be a nightmare today. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't until the next day, and I knew it'd be all in the press, and, um, you know, you've got to read the... the, the the rubbish, and then you've got to go to the races because you know yeah. that was on a Wednesday in those days. So you had the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But but the race as a whole, because quite a lot of people have watched it, and just the general impression was he just didn't stay a mile and a half. But but in fact, what you're saying is he just hit the front too soon. Oh, he it? went too. I went too soon. Yeah. But then Al Granton, you had one more run uh, before his feet went wrong, and I rode him in the Irish Derby, and he actually beat uh, Rainbow Quest. <laughs> And I didn't hit the front till 50 yards out on him. And he won cruising, you know. Really good horse. Yeah. Oh, he was an exceptional horse. Just a shame he was in fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, we mentioned, of course, I was, uh, was a Guineas when he won the Guineas three times. Lomond, a really good horse, back in 83. Yeah. And, of course, 93, yeah. 10 years later, Zephonic the Tonic. Mm. Um, I mean, for Fab, who you've already talked about, but but Sophonic, an exceptional horse. Oh yeah, he was he was a he was um, he was just amazing two year old, you know. He was at, at two, he was like a three year old, great big massive horse, bolted up in all his races, never had to really ride him. And then um, I rode him in his trial race at Major on the Feet, and I wasn't I wasn't well. I was feeling really poorly with with the flu. Anyway, I got beat, but the ground was very heavy, and he loved fast ground, and luckily it came up quick at Newmarket for the Guineas. When he won the Guineas, he bolted in, yeah. and he beat a good horse, Barathea. Yeah. Um, and then sadly, after that, he bled. Then he went to Australia and, and killed himself, trying to jump a massive gate. But on his, with that turn of foot? Oh, he had a great, massive turn of foot. It was powerful. But can you explain at all when you're, because you ride 4,600 winners. Yeah. Some of those will have been claimers, low-grade handicappers rated 50. Yeah. Then you sit on Zephonic. How, how, just to you, what's the difference between sitting on that to the others? Can you really tell instantly he's just in a different league? Oh, yeah. You can tell going to the start. Just cantering down. It just floats, doesn't mm. it? Or, or... Oh, yeah. They're just different league. They just go down there and you think, oh, yeah, this is... This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like an, an, an evening out. Yeah, it's like a two-year-old, you ride first time out. Yeah. And you take it to the start and you think, oh dear, I like this. Yeah. And then, you know, if you really like it, nine times out of ten, that'll win. And, and is it a case of, uh, therefore, when you ask a horse like Zephonic to do something, he does it instantly? Pick up as quick as lightning. Whereas a low-grade horse might need... A low-grade horse, that they, um, you, they need time and, and, and you've got to get them into a rhythm and get them going. Mm. 
So it's just it's it's that difference, it's celebration. Um, so you won three derbies. You also won three Oakses, I think. Polygamy, yeah. seventy four. Scintillate, seventy nine. Mm -hmm. And of course for Henry, Lady Carla in ninety six. Yeah, I mean she bolted up. Sadly, she never won again. I don't know why, but yeah. she was. She won the Linkfield. Yeah, she well. broke the track record at, at Leicester as a two-year-old, and then she won the Linkfield Derby trial very easy, and then she bolted up by a long way, owned by um, Waffig side. Yeah, Waffig, yeah. yeah, the green and white. Was and, Rochelle. Yeah, and then um, she went to Ireland and ran disappointing in the Oaks. Put a good good mare on her day. And uh, amazingly, because in a way, it's not the most important classic, but in some ways for you, the St. Legend was a massively important classic. Uh, we'll get to Silver Patriot in a minute, but Moon Madness, you've mentioned too long. And uh, um, let's not forget about old Moonax in 1994, because oh, yeah, Moon he was a right old character, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, well, but muzzle or something. Yeah, but he was in the handicap the day before. <laughs> right? For very oh, Yeah, and he, he, if he'd have ran there, he was an absolute certainty, because he had no weight. But they took the chance and ran him in the, in, in, in the ledger. And he won. They're inside the final quarter mile. It's Broadway Flyer. Can he keep it up? It's Moonax now the challenger. Pat Edry in second. Then in third, double trigger. Ionio and Sacrament. Broadway Flyer now coming to the end of his tether. Moonax is finishing the stronger on the outside. This could be a major upset in this 218th teleconnection St. Ledger. The rank outsider. Moonax is going to win it. Moonax from Broadway Flyer. He was a bit nutty, wasn't he? I used to get off him and run away from him. He tried the, to bite you, I used to let the, uh, the, the travelling head lad, he used to take the saddle off, and the girl that was leading him, she, she had a, a, a rubber, like a, quite a long stick, and he used to bite on it. Otherwise, he'd have you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Silver Patrick was he 4,000th winner for you? That was my 4,000th winner, yeah. It's the Frenchman who goes on, vertical speed inside the final quarter mile, tackled now by the favourite Silver Patriarch, and then the other grey on the outside is the Fly, racing down towards the final furlong in the ledger, Silver Patriarch and Pat Edry goes on, to in second vertical speed, the Fly is back in third and fourth places, Windsor Castle, but it's all Silver Patriarch and Pat Edry now, win number 4,000 in Britain for Pat Edry, and the ledger goes to Silver Patriarch. I stayed on, riding, till I rode him, and then... That was on the Saturday. I was in so much pain with my back. On the Tuesday, I had surgery for, where I had a, a, a bone taken out of my back for, I was under the knife for about four hours. But the, the, the surgeon. The Tuesday before the? That was the Tuesday after the ledger. Oh, yeah. I rode him up to the ledger, yeah. came home that night. I lay on that floor there, couldn't go to bed. Yeah. Because it, it, was, it was just killing me, and my um, the uh, the doctor that did the MRI scan and everything like that was um, a guy called Nigel Henderson, and he said to me, "Look, you know, it's fifty-fifty when you'll ever ride again." But luckily, he did a good job on it, and I had a couple of more years left in it.